What's going on guys, my name is Suboptimal and in this tutorial we're going to go over how to set up a 3JS project. When you're learning a new programming language, the first thing you usually do is write the minimal amount of code to print hello world on the screen. When it comes to 3D coding with 3JS or any other 3D framework, your goal will be a little bit different. Rather than printing hello world, you'll need to get a 3D cube on the screen. So that will be the main goal of today's video. We'll figure out the best possible way to set up a 3JS project and display a 3D cube on the screen. So most tutorials on the web explaining 3JS, including the 3JS docs themselves, give you examples on how to set it up with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But I believe that is suboptimal. So in this video, we're going to be setting up 3JS with Vite and React. The best way to explain this reasoning is to just showcase a project that I made last year. If we click the icon on the top right over here, you can see that I've got this complex UI that is showing code snippets on the screen, which I can sort of toggle on and off whenever I want to. I don't know about you, but there's no way I could build this type of functionality using plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the main point of setting up 3JS with Vite is that it gives you the best of both worlds. You can make interesting 3D experiences inside of the HTML canvas, and you can also build complex UIs with React, Vue, or Angular, or whatever front-end framework you are familiar with. Now, specifically for this tutorial series, I'm going to be focusing on React, but a lot of the code is pretty similar, even if you're working with another front-end framework like Vue or Angular. Before we actually dive into the code, I'm just going to ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is to leave a like on this video for the YouTube algorithm. Cool. With that out of the way, let's get started with setting up our Vite project and then importing 3JS into it. Run the command npm create Vite latest. Now you can specify a project name, which we're going to call this 3Setup. And of course, we're going to select React and we're going to select base React and not TypeScript. And once you do that, you can CD into this project and run npm install and npm run dev. So npm just finished installing and we can do npm run dev, which is going to open up the project and it's going to look like this inside of localhost. In order to do anything with 3JS, we just need a simple canvas displayed on screen so we can remove everything related to this base React template. So let's go into our project and just start deleting all the unnecessary files. I like to do this because I don't like having too many files to filter through. And let me zoom out a little bit, remove this logo and move everything inside of here. Hello world. So at this point, if we run npm run dev once more, you know, we just see hello world at the center of the screen. So the last thing I want to do is just set up Tailwind CSS because that's the CSS framework that I like to use. Now I'm going to just import it inside of the index.html and once we save this file, we can start using the Tailwind classes. So I added a font bold and text 6xl class to this div. When we go here, we'll notice that Tailwind CSS is working. Now we got our React project set up with Vite and Tailwind CSS. Up next, we're going to want to actually set up 3JS. The first thing that you're going to do is run npm install 3, which is going to install the 3JS packages into your node modules. Afterwards, there's a bit of setup that you need to go through to get a basic 3JS scene up and running. For now, we're going to do everything inside of the app.jsx file. First thing I did was remove all the other code that I had and just displayed a canvas. This is sort of all we need for a 3JS scene. Everything in 3JS is just going to bind to this canvas. One more thing that we need to do is make sure that we run our 3JS and set it up once the canvas has loaded. What we're going to do is import the use effect function and everything from now on forth is just going to be inside of this use effect. And so if you're working with something like view, I think the function that you'd write inside of would be like after a component mounted or something like that. Now we can actually get started to writing the 3JS code. First thing we're going to do is create a scene. Now afterwards, we got to set up a camera and let's just keep it simple and use the perspective camera. And if you hover over it in VS code, you can sort of see all the available options. You got field of view that I'm passing in. You've got the aspect ratio, the near and far numbers. So all of these are just sort of the basic defaults that I like to stick with. After we initialize the camera, we also have to initialize a renderer. And this renderer is going to take in the canvas element and and we're also going to pass in uh, anti-aliasing to be true just so that the 
3D objects uh, look smooth. And we're gonna set the size of this renderer and append it to the document. And then now we gotta add some lighting. First one is ambient lighting. You know, you can just create a new 3JS ambient light, pass in the color of the light and sort of the intensity. And then you can also add a spotlight and basically these two things are just sort of ways so that when we display something on the 3 js uh, canvas we can actually see it otherwise there won't be any lighting on it it'll just be invisible and of course the last thing we're going to do is animate it so in order to animate it uh, we're going to take in the renderer and we're going to call the render function and pass in the scene as well as the camera and what this is going to do is it's just going to run this function every single frame once we do all this and save this, we'll have our basic 3JS scene up and running. And if you got a black screen just like this, that means you're actually doing it right. The thing is, we actually haven't added anything to this scene yet. So next step is to actually add a basic cube. I'm going to run these three lines of code. So the first one is uh, we are creating a box geometry, which is of size 16 by 16 by 16. I'm going to use the mesh normal material because I think it's sort of the easiest to see when you're displaying it on a screen. Once we create the box mesh, we want to add it to the scene. And just to sort of ensure that it is working, let's add a little bit of a rotation on the animate function. We can refresh the page and we'll see that we've got our basic little 3D cube up and running. So at this point, we've done our hello world inside of 3JS, but there are a few more things that are really helpful. And these two things are orbit controls and stats. We're gonna import orbit controls from the 3JS examples folder, and we're gonna import stats also from the 3JS examples folder. And this one takes in the camera and the renderer. And we're also gonna add the stats. We also want to animate them on every frame. So we can call the stats.update and controls.update inside of the animate function. And so once you set that up, you can see on the top left here, you've got the frames per second. This is what the stats is. And you've got orbit control. So you can sort of click and move around Realistically speaking, this is a lot of code to have in your app.jsx file. So let me refactor this code and sort of bring it out into a separate class and show you guys what the finished code is going to look like. So I've refactored the code into this new class called scene init, which only takes in the ID of the canvas. And what we can do is just call these two functions initialize and animate. And if we just go to this class, you can see that all I'm really doing is the same thing as initializing the camera, the scene, and the renderer, as well as the controls. And I even added the ability to uh, resize the window, but nothing too different from what we had before. Now, if we go back to our app, we can see that it's the same thing, except the code looks a lot cleaner because the app.jsx file is not over 100 lines long. That was a little bit of code and I walked you guys through it pretty quickly. So if you want to look at the code, then you can go to the 3JS tutorials repository on my GitHub. Just head over to the 00 setup guide and you can just npm install it and you'll be good to go with your 3JS setup. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a little bit of an understanding of how to set up your 3JS project with Vite and React. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content about 3JS and coding for the metaverse. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.